Okay, in this lessons of wave, we are going to understand the graphical representation of waves. These are our learner's outcomes. We will learn how, about how waves are represented using graphs such as displacement versus distance and displacement versus time, and the interpretation of these graphs. So these are some prior knowledge. In order to, uh, for us to better analyze the waves, we will represent waves using graphs. And by drawing graphs, we can actually find out the attributes of the waves. There are two main types, uh, displacement versus distance and displacement versus time. Let's look at the first type. Okay, Displacement versus distance is just like a standstill picture of the wave in a particular point in time. Okay, Say maybe time equals to 5 seconds. So we just fast forward to 5 seconds. So roughly about 5 seconds. At 5 seconds, this will be the displacement time graph. Okay, there's something similar to this. Okay, so from this graph, we can obtain information regarding about the amplitude of the wave. So you can just measure the amplitude from here to here. So this will be the amplitude of the wave. And you can also know the wavelength of wave. So uh, east, so the peak to this peak, okay, you, it is the wavelength of the wave. So you can find the amplitude and the wavelength. So if you have a uh, water wave such as like this, okay, the displacement time distance graph would look something uh, based on the flat line, okay, where the wave is not disturbed. So the dis so this particular point P and point Q, if you translate to a displacement time graph, would be here and here. So why is it that it is right now a zero? Because it's based on the comparing difference with the flat line over here. Okay, so um, but of course, this let's say this is a PQR, this is R. Okay, so you find that R will correspond to a certain displacement. Okay, so a certain displacement or the distance from the flat line to here would be considered as an R. Okay, but however, since this is a standstill picture, you do not have information regarding about the period of the wave or the frequency of the wave. But why? Okay, I'll use an analogy to help you to understand. By looking at a single picture of a man running, can you actually find out about how fast he is running? Or in short, his speed. You find that if you look at this person, even though he looks like he is like running very fast, but he could be just posing. So, uh, the idea is that you cannot gauge how fast a person is running if you have only a single photo. In order to find his speed or how fast he's running, you must know the position of that person after some time. So you must know that maybe after some time later, he is over at here, may at two seconds. So in this case, if he has moved five second, uh, five meters over two seconds, so his speed can be calculated as two point five meters per second. So the idea there is that you cannot find how fast the wave is repeating itself by just a single standstill. Uh, wave picture. If you want information about how fast or how often the wave repeats itself, you must actually plot the displacement time graph, which is the second one. So, which means that you must know the displacement of the graph after some time. Similar to knowing the position of a running man after some time later. In other words, we can only know how the wave moves by comparing at different timings. So. However, the displacement time graph only focus on a single uh, point on the wave. So you only look at maybe say particular, this particular green, okay? And you note and you would see how this green dot actually move. Okay, let's just uh, move, make it move for a while. Okay, you notice that the green dot, okay, as the wave goes, it will go down and up. Okay, so there will be a certain timing that it actually repeats itself. So when he repeats his movement after some time, that is the period of the wave. So from this graph, you can obtain information regarding about the amplitude of the wave and the period of the wave. Okay, since you know the period of the wave, it means that you also know the frequency of the wave as frequency is just over uh, one over period. And since, however, it's focused on a single particle in the wave, you do not have information regarding about the wavelength of the wave. So displacement time graph will look something like this. Okay, notice the, how this green thing actually moves. It will actually goes up 
and down, up and down. So you are only focused on a single particle, how it actually moves. Okay, so this graph over here describes the displacement time graph of this green uh, circle. So summary, you find that for displacement distance, look at the overall wave displacement and many points of the wave, but only a single point in time. Okay, so a sense to picture. So something like this. But uh, displacement time graph looks at only a single point, but across many different timings. So that means that maybe you look at this particular green dot and then how it moves up and down, up and down. Okay, you don't care about the rest of how the rest move. So that's for displacement time. So uh, you can say that uh, displacement distance is many points in, uh, in waves and single moment in time, while displacement time is a single point in wave but many moments in time. It was mentioned, okay, it gives information regarding about the wavelength of the wave, but for displacement time, it gives the uh, period of the wave. And by knowing the period of the wave, you know the frequency of the wave. And it doesn't have information of each other's. So this is a pictorial summary. So you know, always know the amplitude of these two different graphs, displacement distance and displacement time. But for displacement distance, you know the wavelength. Displacement time, even though it seems like it repeats itself, it is considered as in the periodic wave. Okay, these are some practice maybe you would like to have uh, to have a look. Okay, you may pause the video and uh, just do a checkpoint. Okay, you can pause the video also here to do a checkpoint to find whether you know the period frequency at the amplitude. Okay, I'll show this answer in the next video. Okay, that's all for now. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.